I was separated from my parents. They cut my hair. I didn't talk language, English. I only, know, I only knew my language, Cree. And then they were not, not allowed to visit me. Athletes got treated different by that I'm saying. Uh, they got better meals and uh, they didn't get the same punishment, especially during the season. There's some positives and negatives, and uh, the positive was we got to learn how to play hockey. I can't describe how I feel about the Oilers honoring residential school hockey and survivors. We were not allowed to speak our language. We were not allowed to dress in our regalia, to dance, to celebrate, to honor our culture. So to allow us to be on the ice and to now capture that back is incredible. And it will be with pride that we do this. So I want to thank you. Thank you. Please join us in welcoming the Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner and former University of Alberta Golden Bears hockey player, Chief Wilton Littlechild. A member of the 1966 Memorial Cup winning Edmonton Oil Kings, Mr. Ted Hodgson. And the trailblazing first Canadian Aboriginal player in the National Hockey League, Mr. Fred Sasakamoos. Joining them, representing the promising future of First Nation hockey, are members of the Alexis First Nation, Calling Lake First Nation, Enoch First Nation, Masquachi Cree Nation, and Woodland Cree First Nations. They will now be joined at center ice by Rangers alternate captain Brad Richards and Oilers alternate captain Matt Hendricks for tonight's ceremonial puck drop. Sufficient, and we had to do all them chores. And then the girls done the same thing, they were on this side. My sister was on the other side, I never seen her for a whole 10 months. She was just on the other side, next door, the wall was there like that. They wouldn't let you. I've been abused. I've been in what you call it. Uh, I've seen abuse. I've seen my brother abused, get abused. You know, all that is so. Uh, I don't think I'll ever forget it. Being an Indian was uh, a, a tough chore, you know, to uh, to go through the hurdles, you know, that I went through. You didn't have no hockey sticks either. You didn't have no skates. You have to borrow. You have to bomb. You get an apple once a once a week on Sundays only. If you go to church and if you're a good boy, you get an apple. So you know you you said sacrifice your apple for the one hour skate. You, know, you didn't get your pair of skates till you're. 12 years old, 13 years old. You have to work about maybe five years in a, at the barns to earn a pair of skates. So that's what I done. I worked my way up and you know bought skates and a pair of skates, but I had to work for five years for them. But a real hockey stick, and no, three dollars, maybe about four dollars, five dollars a hockey stick. No, you couldn't afford it. I had to stick it out. Sometimes I wanted to quit because of the behaviors and the, and the taunts on the, on the ice. It took me a long time to uh, not react to that. I, I plead guilty on uh, lowering my level of intelligence and integrity to, to the racist behavior and behave, racist comments of others. You know, people that yell at us, you know, they start putting these Indian songs. It was okay. If you got higher into the league, uh, there was a lot more respect. Uh, 
it, it got better actually. I know sometimes they, they would call me, you know, the dirty names. So I must, I must be doing something. There was only 125 hockey players in each of six teams. 125, all the six teams. And I was one of them. skating in Madison Square Gardens and signing autographs beside Bobby Orr. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, two weeks ago I was standing on a gravel road in Hobima. They only picked uh, six of us from the, from the residential school to play on the lo local uh, team. We didn't have to try out. They already knew our skill and ability. We're still suffering the effects of that cycle of intergenerational impacts. And the costs are just sometimes just not affordable for many. Because I know once they get that opportunity, we have innate uh, innate skills and uh, creator creator gifts for for many of our, our young people, our boys and girls. And I know this, uh, you know, we have the biggest hearts when it comes to competition to uh, to try and achieve our dreams. And I'm hoping that to end my experience from residential school with my grandchildren, and uh, you know, keep them in an environment and keep uh, talking to them. They are special, and they are somebody. And they've got a talent, a certain talent that, uh, that the Creator gave them and, uh, you know, use it to, to make a life for yourself. Histoire est une